everybody has their cameras off. I think they're hoping I won't pick them uh, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> like in the classroom, as long as you don't look up at the teacher, they can't call on you, right? <laughs> you were in my class, you would. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, Mr. Jensen, I don't believe you have had the privilege of leading us here recently. Would you mind leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance this, uh, when we get going this evening? You got it. I'll even leave my camera on. There you go. Thanks. Um, our interpreter, Hillary, are you there? Yes. Awesome. yes, I'm here. Awesome. So I know there's going to be two of you. Are you guys good with trading off um, between the two of yourselves? You can manage it. Fantastic. Thank yeah. you. Um, she should be coming in here shortly. We had a problem with the link, so we had to get a different one before we could get in here. Okay. Thank you. Mrs. Sandoval, can you hear us? Yes, yeah, I'm here. Great, thank you, Ms. Sandoval. Mr. Ibarra, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Great, thank you. Hi, Mr. how are you? Good, thank you. Okay. And before we get started, this is just a bit of housekeeping for the board members. I'll, I'll make this announcement in the meeting, obviously, for the public's benefit as well. Uh, there are a number of items that by uh, ed code have to be pulled. Uh, those are the contracts with respect to our executive staff. So you'll hear me uh, pull all of those items and we'll have to go through some readouts before taking action. So that's just something procedurally we'll have to do. So just uh, give you that heads up now. Hello, Dr. Miranda, can you hear us? I can. Uh, good afternoon. Good, good afternoon. Um, Stephen, as Mr. Torres he says he's waiting to be made a panelist, I believe he may be attendee. And Dr. Miranda, we have Stephen Najeko and Melanie Valdez who will be facilitating our board meeting tonight. Uh, Shane, today's Shane's uh, son's birthday. All right. Well, happy birthday to his son. Uh, well, welcome, uh, Melanie, and welcome, Stephen. Yes. We're in good hands. Yes, we are. Good evening, everyone. Have we let our students from VHS on yet? Do you know? Letting them on right now. Okay, thank you. Good evening, Mr. Torres. Good evening. How are you doing, Dr. Miranda? You know what? Pretty Hi, good. Sir. Thank you. Good job the thank other you. night, by the way. Thank you for the awards. Oh, thank you. Not for me, okay. but for the students. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Nice to see you, Board President Flores. Good to see you, Principal Torres. How are you? Good, thank you. Good, good, good. Looking forward to graduation, right? Yes, that's going <laughs> to be a fun. That will be a fun time. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's a difficult question for a principal because, of course, you are. But at the same time, it's one of the most hectic and logistically challenging events one could ever uh, partake in. So we just get to show up and, and then smile and have fun. You have to make sure everything gets uh, falls into place. It's worth it. Good. Good. We're excited. We're happy to be doing it in person. Joanne, do we have uh, do we have everyone from the board on? Do we do a, a yes? All seven board members are in attendance. Great. Okay. And then uh, just want to make sure before we officially open here, we have Principal Torres, and then the BH students are uh, logged on as well. Uh, Melanie or Stephen, are the BHS students on? Uh, we're trying to sort that out. She's right there. Okay. We have. One student we are able to get on as an attendee. In fact, the other two students are coming in on their phone, possibly, and we can mute and unmute them, but we can't make them attendees in the meeting. Or panelists, rather. I'm sorry, a panelist. So when it comes to that time, what we'll do is we'll unmute um, Ms. Ramirez and Mr. Castillo, and they can, they'll be able to speak freely. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Melody. All right. Well, I think we have everybody logged on, so I think we're good to go. All right. With that being said, I'll go ahead and open then tonight's meeting, May 20th, 2021. This is a meeting of the Golden Joy Unified School District Board of Education. Uh, at this time, we will begin our meeting as we do every meeting with a Pledge of Allegiance. And I would like to invite our Assistant Superintendent of Business Services, Mr. Rick Jensen, to please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. 
Thank you. Everyone, please stand and face the flag. Put your right hand over your heart. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may, you may now be seated. Thank you, Mr. Jensen. And now, Ms. Medina, if you would please take roll call of board members. <clears throat> sure. Mr. Ibarra? Present. Mrs. Hara? Mrs. Hara? Present. Thank you. Ms. Dorian Ojeda? Here. Ms. Sandoval? Here. Mr. Fuentes? Present. Ms. Arigui? Present. Mr. Flores? Present. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, that takes us to item 1.3 on our agenda, which is the adoption of the agenda. Um, currently, we have no recommended amended changes to the agenda. Just want to confirm that is correct, Mr. Superintendent. Yeah, that's correct, uh, Board President Flores, no amendments to the agenda tonight. Okay, so I'll go ahead and ask for a motion to adopt the agenda as presented then by the board without any additional amendments. Is there a motion? So moved, so moved. Chad Haro. Second, Israel Fuentes. Great, I have a motion by Board Member Haro, second by Board Member Fuentes. Ms. Medina, roll call vote, please. Mr. Ibarra? Yes. Mrs. Hara? Yes. Mr. Flores? Yes. Ms. Dorino Ojeda? Yes. Ms. Sandoval? Yes. Mr. Fuentes? Yes. Ms. Arigui? Yes. Thank you. Thank you for that. That item is approved unanimously. The next item is our school showcase. And tonight we're excited to have student leaders from Bloomington High School to present to us tonight. Uh, I'd like to go ahead and turn it over to Principal Torres, our principal of Bloomington High School, to introduce our students who will give our presentation tonight. Principal Torres, take it away. Good evening, Board President uh, Mr. Flores, uh, Dr. Miranda, Superintendent, Board Members, and Executive Cabinet and Community, uh, Bloomington High School students, uh, Ronnie Castillo, Vinay Martinez, and Yaslin Ramirez will be presenting information about Bloomington High School. Hello, can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Yes. Good evening, Board President Flores, me Board Members, Superintendent Miranda, and members of the audience. My name is Ronnie Castillo, and I'm a student at Bloomington High School. Today, VNA Martinez and Yoslin Ramirez join me to share the great accomplishments of our Bruin family. We are honored to shine a spotlight on academics, activities, and athletics at Bloomington High School. I'd like to begin by sharing some information on BHS academics. On May 12th, the Colton Redlands Ukaipa Regional Occupa Occupational Program hosted an evening of excellence to honor students. 491 students earned recognition for GPAs between 3.0 and 3.99. 280 students received acknowledgement of their 4.0 or higher GPA. A total of 771 students were honored at different grade point average levels. This year has been rough to say the least. However, our re-engagement team made sure to find ways to show students that their efforts have not gone overlooked. A reward and recognition program was created to congratulate students. Among those awardees were students who remained engaged in school despite overwhelming odds, those who turned things around and re-engaged in classes, and finally those who had above 80% positive attendance. The latest rounds of awards acknowledged 45 students who were either nominated by teachers or were found to have improved through data analysis. At our all school awards virtual ceremony, we saw that 31 English language learners were reclassified and 94 students achieved perfect attendance. A recording of the ceremonies available on our school website. Students will be able to pick up their awards at their assigned checkout date. 
We congratulate all, all of these students on their achievement. Another celebration of students was hosted by RIMS AVID as they honored all AVID seniors on May 13th during a virtual ceremony. Each school was honored by guest speakers to point out their accomplishments. Mrs. Cheryl Meyer gave a thoughtful speech acknowledging our Bruins in the AVID program. Advanced placement exams also met quite a challenge this year. Although testing did not begin until early May, Mrs. Erica McDonald began preparations much earlier. AP Bruins were invited to choose their exam on campus or at home. We had nearly 350 Bruins taking one or more exams. AP Spanish language had the most examinees with a total of 70 students. This year, ASB student leaders provided a BHS themed reusable water bottle, pencil, eraser, and hydro flask sticker because we wanted to show support and encouragement. Students who took their exams at home will get their items at underclassmen checkout the first week of June. Our counseling department hosted Senior Scholarship Night this past Tuesday via a drive-through recognition ceremony. Each year, headed by Mrs. Zolchi Sedlich, the counselors put on a great event. This year, 30,000 in scholarships went to recipients chosen by the scholarship committee. Among those celebrated, were seniors who received the scholarships by literacy seal, honor roll, valedictorian Wendell Veste, salutatorian Jessenia Lopez, an outstanding senior girl, Ayana Castanon, an outstanding senior boy, Herbert Roger Vega. We are lucky, we are a lucky school to have our amazing counselors to give us this annual event that truly helps our students in their future endeavor, endeavors. We are also proud to report that our yearbook staff, led by Mrs. Leticia de Rocher, had worked hard to create a tangible yearbook. While many schools went the virtual route for their annual publication, our Bruins chose to do whatever it took to create a yearbook that they could be proud of, and one that we will able be what we will be to able to cherish for years to come. They kept in touch with students through email and social media platforms to gather information on what we have been up to during the school year. They could have taken the easy way out and not produced a book or delayed productions until fall like many other schools did. Thanks to their dedication and hard work ethic, we all get to enjoy this incredible publication on time with the exact number of pages as previous years and double the size of normal senior section. Because of them, we get to look at it from time to time to remember the 2020 through 2021 school year in Bruin country. These yearbooks are not only for our students, please consider purchasing one for yourself as a keepsake and also to support our publications program. All it takes is a visit to our online store, web store. Great job, yearbook staff. Finally, under the guidance of Mrs. Robin Buckles, Virtual Enterprise had two teams again this year that began competing in November. The competition started with regionals, then nationals, then out to state, and finally the international show. The final competition was in April at the International Trade Show where Sensory, Sener Sensory Serenity opened their virtual store online. They were visited by a team from Belgium and used Google Translate to secure a deal. Virtual Enterprise is a successful program at BHS. Recently, we learned that Sandra Sandoval from a class of 2017 graduated from UCR and secured a position at Sony Pictures. She credits her success to the Bloomington High, High Virtual Rep Enterprise Program. Way to go, Virtual Enterprise. I would now like to turn some time over to my fellow student leader, Viena Martinez, for information about Bruin activities. Thank you. Good afternoon, can you guys hear me? Yes. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you, Ronnie. Good evening. I am Vinay Martinez, Senior Class Treasurer, and I feel honored to present some of the activities we hosted since our last presentation. Throughout the school year, we embraced the challenges of keeping everyone connected via virtual avenues. I would like to begin with a spotlight on our visual and performing arts program. In, collabor in collaboration with Grand Terrace High School, our performing arts students, under the direction of Ms. Taylor Richardson and Mrs. Kimberly Guadalini produced 10 ways to survive life in quarantine. 
This short comedy highlighted all the ups and downs from the last year and a half. Students from both schools took on roles such as the scared shopper on the hunt for toilet paper and the mischievous world solitaire champion. With over 50 families tuned in to watch for the one night only live stream, the event ended as a success. Another performance that is sure to be great comes to us from our choral program under the passionate direction of Mr. Ryan Duckworth. This multimedia performance will include aspects of all different performances our students would normally encounter during the school year, including solos, concerts, honor choir, choir festival, and musical, which will pr present a radio style version of Guys and Dolls Jr. This presentation will be premiered in class over two days with the students and then made available for students to share with their families for the last two days of the school, last two weeks of the school year. At BHS, we work to improve things so we can become an even better place to attend. This year, Mr. Torres, Mr. Sutherland, and Ms. Wright hosted a virtual forum where students were given the opportunity to express their views and on many topics, one being the thoughts of experiencing this during the distance learning. Their comments were shared with the staff so they could be aware of what these students were feeling. We covered topics that were of interest to the students in attendance because their perspective is an important part of our improvement goals, as well as keeping the, the traditions that we enjoy and wish to keep in place. The student forum is something we are excited to keep in place next year and beyond. Hosting activities during this pandemic was quite difficult, but we saw value in creating moments for our peers to remind them that making time to take a break and take care of your social and emotional health is as important as our academics. For Black History Month, students posted online every day for a week about African Americans who have made an impact in and cultural and contributions to our world. Whether it involved politics, sports, science, or world issues, we even made a point to highlight the contribution of our local African Americans. This was a great way for students to educate themselves and others on Black history. Throughout quarantine, it has been tough to be apart from, from our friends and not see them regularly on campus. So student leadership wanted to make sure we found a way to host our friendship week that began a few years ago. One whole week was dedicated to friendship. Every day during the week, we asked Bruins to post pictures and videos to show how they were uplifting friends and even making new ones. One of our activities was random acts of kindness, where we had many activities, activities students could choose to do, such as writing a kind note or encouraging email to someone. We also suggested that fellow Bruins that they make a kindness chart where they wrote down random acts of kindness they witnessed throughout the day. The idea was that was that to have a jar full of kind things to read when Friendship Week was over. The final activity I would like to share with you is Earth Day. Students posted what they did to protect our planet or shared tips to help others improve the, in the ways we treat our Earth. Lastly, we are excited to host senior, ev senior events tomorrow night and after graduation. Seniors can finally gather to celebrate their accomplishment of reaching this stage in life. Earning a high school diploma is a wonderful moment, and we are happy to be hosting our senior farewell movie night and senior in and out picnic. All seniors will get a Bruin themed blanket, lanyard, raffle swag, and much more. Congratulations, class of 2021. We did it. I now turn the last portion of our time to Yasselin Ramirez, sophomore class president. Thank you. Can you hear me? Okay. Good evening. As VNA said, I am Yasselin Ramirez. The final portion of our presentation this evening is focused on athletics. 
The sports season this year was the shortest it has ever been. And the only teams to compete include boys and girls soccer, baseball, softball, cheerleading, and track and field. Even though this season was tough and unconventional, it didn't stop our teams from playing their best. This year, as in years past, our boys soccer team had the best record in their division, earning them the title of San Andres League champions with an eight win, one tie, and one loss season. They moved on to the CIF first round game, which they won three to zero. In round two, the meet defeat with a three to one loss to Citrus High School. Our amazing girls soccer team finished with nine wins and one loss and our Sunkiss League champions. On Wednesday, May 12, they hosted a first round playoff game and won after penalty kicks. In round two, they lost to Redlands East Valley High School. We are always proud of our soccer teams and truly miss being in the stands this year to show our support. Great season soccer. Both boys and girls track and field are currently holding a one and one record. They still have two competitions left against the Yellow Jackets and Titans. Good luck in the next two meets, Bruins. What are sports without cheerleaders? Our Pepsters, under the guidance of Miss Connie Barella, have been active this year as well. They began with virtual practices via Google Meets to learn their cheers. Once allowed, once allowed to host practice on campus, they learned more cheers and more dance routines. They have enjoyed cheering at the games to help hype up the players, especially since spectator attendance was limited. I will also like to finish off with baseball, who has five wins and five losses, and softball with seven wins and two losses. At this time, we are allowing two family members per participating athlete to fill the stands with support. We are also allowed spectators to come and support our athletes by having them sign in at the check-in tables, so long as we remain under one-third full capacity. Baseball has one final game against GT Titans and softball has a final game against Carter High School. Fall sports, including football, volleyball, and cross country start practice this week. Finally, we would like to publicly thank Mr. Sandy Torres for serving BHS, and we wish him the best in his next adventure. We also welcome back Miss Yvette Roman to Bruin Country. We are excited to get back to brick and mortar education. Thank you for allowing us this opportunity to shine the spotlight on Bruin Country. I am looking forward to speaking in the future high school spotlights. See you in the fall. Now we welcome questions and comments. Great, thank you so much for that. Um, I'll go ahead and open it up for questions and comments from board members for our students. This is board member Fuentes, if I may, yes, please. Uh, board president. Please. Thank you. Uh, Ronnie, but I'm sorry, I'm going to mess this one up. Uh, Vianney and uh, Jocelyn, thank you very, very much for such a great presentation uh, on the academics. Uh, the academics, I was there for the drive through. I was there from the beginning to the end, and that was fun. The senior uh, award drive through, that was very fun. It was great to see. All the seniors received their awards and stuff, so that was exciting to, to be there. I was able to go to one game, which was one of the uh, baseball games, and uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, Bloomington did lose the game that, that evening, but I was there to cheer them on, and I'm excited that uh, these uh, sports were available and we were able to get them out there to play on the field, and at least, even though it was the shortest one in history probably, uh, we did get the sports out there and the kids were having fun. So I appreciate uh, that report also. And, and uh, on the, uh, excuse me, on the upcoming events, uh, I see all the great things that are happening, the senior farewell, the finals, the celebrations, 
all of that. And I will be there on the 28th to DJ your uh, practice and your uh, in and out uh, event that you're having. I'm going to be there to DJ that for you, throw you some music so you guys can dance, have some fun. And uh, I'm excited. Uh, I'm also excited because my daughter is also graduating from Bloomington High School this year. It's too as a proud uh, dad. And uh, thank you. Thank you for such a great report. And uh, and I hope to see uh, more of you guys. All right. Thank you. Thank you, board member Fuentes. Other comments or questions from board members? I, I'd like to, well, first of all, thank you for the presentation. Hi. Oh, Hi. Yes. I'm sorry. Please, please. Is that Bertha? I, I'm sorry, Mr. President Flores. Yes. Yes, yes please go uh, ahead. Just, okay, well, I wanted to just uh, thank uh, thank uh, Ronnie and, and Renee and Leslie. Thank you for giving us a glimpse of your activities and accomplishments through your outstanding presentation. We really appreciate that. Um, well, now you are now counting the days to your um, graduation. Um, you um, persevered under very unusual circumstances. Uh, I would just like to congratulate you, congratulate the class of 2029. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm one, a few years. Uh, congratulations, class of 2020, 2021. You did it and you did it well. Thank you. Thank you for that, uh, board member. Out again, other comments or questions from board members? I have a comment. This is Frank Ibarra. Yes, please, uh, Mr. Barra. Thank you, Dan. Uh, I'd like to just take this opportunity to to thank uh, the students, the ASB, for uh, for this year. As has been mentioned, it's been an unusual year, and thank each and every one of you who participate in ASB for being the glue to our student body throughout this uh, difficult year. Uh, being uh, part of all these wonderful activities that you brought to all the students uh, there at Bloomington High School has been an incredible uh, feat that you uh, were able to accomplish and making sure that every student was engaged in feeling as close as they could to high school, Bloomington High School type of activities was so important. And also, uh, I'd just like to say, since it's the end of the school year, congratulations to all those uh, that are graduating this year at Bloomington High School. And I look forward to seeing those who will be returning to continue to, to lead our, our students there and, and continue to keep the board informed on all the wonderful activities that you are doing. So just once again, Thank you very much. Thank you, Dan. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Barra. Other comments or questions from board members? Uh, I'll just add and reiterate uh, what my board members have said as well. Other board members have said, first of all, thank you for the presentation. Um, I am continuing to be amazed and, and impressed with the creativity that our students have and finding ways to stay connected. We heard a lot of a lot of uh, the different activities. I was I particularly like the virtual performances. Um, one of the things that we haven't discussed a whole lot in in during distance learning is how we continue to support uh, the performing arts uh, and arts uh, in general. Uh, and so finding creative ways to do online performing arts um, activities is really important. So I want to thank you guys for sharing that with us. And I hope that that creates other opportunities in the future, even though we're going back to school, that if we could stream or have virtual uh, performing arts activities that can engage people, not just within our community, but beyond. I think that's a pretty cool idea. So fantastic presentation uh, for the seniors. Um, again, you're, I, I am so impressed with your uh, resolve and the fact that throughout this challenge, you've shown each of us what it means to rise to the occasion and stay positive and do amazing things. So uh, we are looking forward to graduation. And Yaslin, uh, looking forward to seeing you in person, hopefully next year as we roll into the next school year. So thank you so much for the presentation. 
Uh, please be safe. And for our seniors, uh, we look forward to seeing you at some of the upcoming events and certainly graduation. So thank you for tonight's presentations. Great job, Bruins. Mr. Flores, can I interrupt really quickly just to um, get our interpreter squared away? Uh, thank you so much, uh, Hillary. Anna, you're both um, set to go, so you guys can alternate as you need it, as you need. Thank you so much, Rick. I really appreciate it. All right, thank you for that. Okay, this takes us to uh, our special presentations portion of tonight's agenda. We have two presentations tonight. Uh, we're going to begin with item 3.1, which is our recognition of retirees. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and invite Dr. Miranda to go ahead and um, open tonight's presentation. I know, I believe we have uh, Director Carlton as well, uh, but of course, uh, this is in uh, in lieu of what we would typically do. Uh, usually, we're able to get together in person and celebrate our retirees and longevity uh, in a nice big uh, event. We're not able to do that yet. So tonight, we're really excited, though, to be able to have a presentation in recognition of all of our incredible employees that are celebrating their longevity and, of course, our retirees. So I will turn it over to Dr. Miranda and Director Carlton. Thank you, Board President uh, and Board. Uh, before I turn it over to uh, Ms. Carlton, uh, I did want to take this opportunity to honor our 2021 CJSD retirees and really thank them for their years of service and dedication to our students, community, and district. Uh, they are a diverse and distinguished group, including administrators, teachers, and classified employees from all parts of the district who have served our students in teaching nutrition services by running our offices and our libraries and much, much more. So having said that, uh, it has been a very difficult year in many ways and challenging year, as many know. So traditionally, as board president mentioned, traditionally we would have come together at our retirement and longevity dinner to share a meal, celebrate and wish our retirees well on their new journey. And while we honor them, and wish them happiness in their new adventures. Uh, it is also with a heavy heart from all of us because of those we, who have we lost uh, this year. So this presentation that you're gonna see includes a tribute page in memory of some of our CJSD uh, teammates, including Joanne Bautista, Joseph Diaz, Joanne Fanny Hux, and Harold Strauss. We honor them as well also tonight we will observe a moment of silence before going into closed session and adjourn the meeting in memory of Patrick Munsterman, a beloved longtime teacher with the district who retired in 2018 and passed away this week. So I wanna take uh, this opportunity to thank uh, the HR fearless leader, Ms. Ingrid Munsterman and her team in the, H, uh, in the human resource uh, division for putting together this tribute to our retirees and longevity award recipients, as well as our, our retirees who agreed to share with us their stories about their careers and next steps. So now I would like to introduce uh, our human resources director, Ms. Lori Carlton for the 2021 Retirement Longevity presentation. Thank you, Dr. Miranda. Good evening, Board President Flores, Board members, Superintendent Miranda, and members of the public. We are honored to congratulate our 2021 Retirees and Longevity Award recipients. To our retirees, your contributions to the Colton Joint Unified School District, are, School District are a great reflection of your priorities as an individual and the importance that you place on commitment and dedication to your work. CJUSD is grateful for everything that you have accomplished in your career and thankful for all you have done to support students, staff, and the community. We wish you as much success and more in your retirement as you have had with CSG, CSUSJ, CJUSD. You have worked hard and have earned a well-deserved retirement. We wish you the best at this wonderful time in your life. And for our Longevity Award recipients, your contributions the CJUSD are invaluable. We thank you for all of your years of hard work and commitment to providing the best for our students and families. CJUSD is grateful for everything that you have done in your roles and we look forward to many more years to come. We thank you and congratulate you. And now if we can 
show our short presentation. Um, this is just in honor of all of our retirees. Skies of blue, and I see clouds of white, and the brightness of day. I like the dark, and I think to myself, What a wonderful world! The colors of the rainbow, so pretty in the sky. I also want the faces of people passing by. See friends shaking and singing. How do you do? They really sing. I, I love you. I hear babies cry and I watch them go. They'll learn much more. And we'll know and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Oh, someday I wish upon a star, wake up with the clouds of far behind. Be will travel melts like a lemon drops. High above the chimney top, that's where you find me, oh, somewhere over the rainbow, way up high. The dream that you dare to why, oh, why? And 
congratulations to all of our 2021 retirees and thank you for all of your hard work for all the years. <clears throat> thank you. Uh, thank you for that presentation. Um, I have lots of wonderful uh, and thank you for the opportunity to to see the book as well. The booklet that was provided. Um, there's lots of familiar faces in this booklet and people that we're, we're going to miss people that have a tremendous amount of. Um, there's a lot of love in this district and uh, we're going to miss every single one of them. So thank you for that. Dr. Miranda and director Carlton. Um, that takes us to our next item on the agenda, which is a, a presentation. Actually, I apologize. Any comments or, or questions from board members, or excuse me, comments from board members uh, with respect to our presentation on the retirees and longevity? I want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to share their thoughts. This is board member Puentes, if I may, uh, board yes, president. Please, absolutely, please. Uh, thank you. I uh, just wanted to congratulate each and every one of you on your retirement. Uh, long billet. I can't even say it. I'm sorry. But for those that have been here with us for many, many years, as I see the numbers, 30 years, 20 years, 25 years, 13 years, 12 years. I mean, you could see the commitment to our students. And from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for your service to our students, to our community. You are. Well, uh, I get very touchy on these things, but you are very much appreciated for everything you do. Because if it wasn't for our teachers, we would not be here today uh, as board members, as presidents, as police officers, as firemen, nurses, doctors, lawyers, if it weren't for our teachers. And for those that are committed to our district, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you and have a great night. Thank you, board member Fuentes. Any uh, other comments from board members? I'd like this to make a comment. This is Frank Ibarra. Sure, please. Thank you, Dan. Uh, just like to take this opportunity to uh, congratulate all the retirees and thank them for their years of dedication to our students and our district. Um, it's incredible how time flies by quickly. And with that, uh, you start a new chapter in each and every one of your new lives. So I just want to take this time to wish you well. And, and hopefully the, the next adventure that you, you take will lead you into something that you really, really uh, are happy and enjoy doing. So once again, just want to say thank you to everyone and, and, and best wishes to you all. Thank you, Dan. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Barra. Other comments from board members? This is board member Haro. Please, board member Haro. <clears throat> I would just like to, um, looking at those numbers, as you said, those numbers are quite large as far as the people, how long people have stayed in this district. And I think it says volumes for the district that we have. We are truly the, uh, the Colton Joint Unified School District, but we are a family in this district. And I want to say, Thank you to each and every one of our retirees for all that they've contributed to make the district what it is, to our teachers for working with our students, to, to everyone, to all of our classified workers. Each of you plays a pivotal role in the lives of our students, and we are very grateful for all of the time you have given to this district. And I wish you well with your future. And I want to say, may you have only wonderful uh, times ahead, happiness spent with your family and doing things that you deserve to do now. And I also want to thank all of our longevity <clears throat> awardees as well. Again, it speaks volumes when somebody starts at a job and works for as many years as they have as these awardees. Um, I think it says a lot about the district that we represent. And I just wanna say thank you to each and every one of you. Each and every one of you is valued. So thank you. Thank you for that very, very heartwarming uh, board member Hara. Other, other comments from board members? <clears throat> Mr. Flores, yes, I, I would I like to just say a few words. 
<laughs> sure. Why don't we start? Uh, we'll go with board member Thorin Ojeda, since I think she chimed, uh, she spoke first, and then board member Adegin. So, board member Thorin Ojeda, please. Thank you. Congratulations to each one of our retirees. As I looked at that list tonight, I thought about the number of individuals who've had an impact on every student who's come through our district in whatever position you played. Um, there's no more wonder, no more important calling than being working with schools with children, uh, for children, and each of you have shown your dedication to our kids, and I thank you so much for that. And what what I wish for you now is you worked hard and now you need to play hard and enjoy your retirement do those things that you put aside and just totally enjoy the work um, that you enjoy the rem memories of the work you've done and head for uh your future of doing the things that you would have liked to have done thank you for our longevity folks um, <clears throat> each and every year that you work for our district is greatly appreciated and you do make a difference, every single one of you. So thank you very much and um, hope to have you for many more years, those of you who are not retired and your day will come too. So thank you so much from everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Board Member Thorio uh, Board Member Adegin. Yes, I would like to just congratulate all the teachers, the principals, the bus drivers, office workers, the secretaries, the nutrition services, that are retiring today. A big thank you. Thank you for what you gave to our students, to our district all these years. I was touched by all your stories and it's clear that you lived your purpose in our district. You delivered in a big way. You can leave us knowing that you have made a difference in our children's lives. For that, I thank you. And by the way, if you get it out of your system, this retirement thing, and you want to come back, we would love to welcome you back in some form. You know that we will be here. And again, congratulations. Thank you for that board member out again. Um, any other comments from board members? And I'll just reiterate how much we appreciate, how much we are grateful for the amazing staff that we have here at Colton Unified. The fact that we have such longevity, it's been said, the fact that we have so much longevity speaks to how much people love working, not only for the district, but love working with each other. The, the environment it is very much a family. Um, and it's I, I feel blessed to be able to raise my children in a district where there uh, are traditions and and in some cases teachers that have remained in this district for so long that they uh, are really become generational and understand this community and love this community. So we're blessed to have amazing staff, um, second to none really here in, in Colton Joe Unified. Thank you. All right, that takes us to our next uh, presentation tonight, which is item 3.2. It's an African-American Parent Advisory Committee presentation. And at this time, I will go ahead and turn it over to uh, Dr. Peterson, our Assistant Superintendent of Education Services, Educational Services, go ahead and kick off this presentation. Dr. Peterson. Thank you, Board Member Flores, and I would um, like to introduce uh, two members of our African American Parent Advisory Committee to do the presentation tonight, as well as also thank um, them for all the work they've they've completed through this year. And so, with no further ado, I'd like to introduce. Um, Dr. Dolores Curry, a counselor at Grand Terrace High School, and Deara Durham, an assistant principal at Colton High School, um, to give the presentation tonight. Good evening, Board President Mr. Flores, Board Members, Superintendent Dr. Miranda, Executive Cabinet, and all meeting participants. Tonight, we're gonna to give you an overview of our APAC committee and the things that we have done this year, as well as things we look forward to in the future. Our APAC committee, our African-American Parent Advisory Committee is spearheaded by district employees under the leadership of Ms. Tiffany Hampton, Ms. Regina Clausell, and our members are Ms. Felicia Noel, Ms. Tabricia Lang, Ms. Tanisha Jackson Samuel, Ms. Deara Durham, Ms. Nyree Clark, 
<clears throat> Ms. Rochelle Robinson and myself, Dolores Curry. Next slide, please. We are grateful for the support that we have been provided through the district as a whole, but we definitely want to thank um, the district, Mr. Brandon Dade, Ms. Melissa Kingston, Dr. Tina Peterson, for all the work and all the support that they have provided us throughout the year. We would also like to acknowledge Ms. Alejandra De La Torre and Mr. Gil Diaz from the Language Support Services and Family Engagement for their support and their contributions to the APAC committee. Next slide, please. Our mission is a shared vision that was created with our APAC parents to guide and to share the vision of equity and success for African-American students. The purpose of the APAC committee is to involve parents and guardians of African-American students in the decision-making process that improves academics, ensures fairness and equity in all opportunities, and creates solutions to existing problems through effective communication between the community and the district. Next slide, please. <clears throat> and we're gonna give you a snapshot of the things that have occurred during the 20, 2020 and 2021 academic school year. Next slide, please. On Wednesday, June 24th of 2020, we held our first Black um, Experience Forum. It was an opportunity for our students to share their stories and experience in light of the events that had took place surrounding the death of George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, amongst many others. And this was um, led by Dr. Mr. Hardy Brown, which is a um, San Bernardino County Board Member of Education. Next slide, please. We also want not, did not want to forget our staff. So we also had in November, we held a forum for our CJUSD employees on how race affects space. And this was facilitated by Dr. Sharina Betters, the Chief of Equity and Access for San Bernardino County Superintendent of Schools and Mr. Hardy Brown, San Bernardino County Board Member of Education. And during this time, we wanted um, educators to be able to share their experiences and to learn from each other and also create a safe space where they were able to talk about different racial and inequality issues that were taking place so we can better have a better situation for our students. Next slide, please. As a part of APAC, we also support our Black Community Coalition led by Principal Michael Williford, and we participate in the meetings and support as much as possible. And we appreciate the things that he is, he is doing within the community and it's built upon many community partnerships to strengthen student and staff advocacy. And at this time, I would like to turn it over to my colleague, Ms. Durham. Thank you, Dr. Curry, for the transition. Thank you, Dr. Peterson, for the introduction. Next slide, please. During Black History Month, APAC hosted a Black History Trivia Night and acknowledged students who demonstrated excellence during semester one. APAC ended Black Lives Matter Week with a talent showcase where students K through 12 had an opportunity to share their talents. Students displayed their artistic abilities through powerful spoken word, beautiful songs, and amazing presentations about our great historical leaders. Next slide, please. During the week of February 22nd, APAC organized the Colton Joint Black Lives Matter Week. The Black Lives Matter at School Week of Action was intended to highlight, uplift, and affirm the rich history and contributions of the Black community, to educate all stakeholders, and to cultivate in Black students a sense of pride, self-worth, and self-love. Each day centered around rich themes such as restorative justice, diversity, globalism, empathy, Black women, Black families, and Black values. Next slide, please. A big part of APAC is using data to drive our action. And based on the California School Dashboard information from 2020, Colton Joint had approximately 5.3% students who identify as Black or African American. Colton Joint has been successful in graduating 89% of our Black or African American students. However, only 40% of them are deemed college and career ready. Next slide, please. Last meeting, we hosted representatives from the Blue Educational Foundation 
who have partnered with the Center for Social Innovation at UC Riverside and the Inland Empire Black Equity Initiative to take a deep dive into the state of education for Black or African American youth throughout the Inland Empire. They composed a report titled Black Education Agenda using a mixed method research approach that identified five key priority areas that Black parents, guardians, or in students determine if addressed effectively in our districts will close the racial equity gap in student achievement. The final version of this report will be published this month and made available to the public. As a res result of reviewing the data on Black and African American student achievement in Colton Joint and understanding the key priority areas APAC made a suggestion to begin book studies as a district and focus on cultural proficiency. Our Colton Joint Management Team has read and conducted workshops using the text, Culture Proficiency, a Manual for School Leaders led by our Directors of Curriculum and Instruction, Dr. Mooney and Dr. Heider. And our teachers have begun their book study using the text, Culturally Responsive Teaching and the Brain led by our EdTech, CPS, Nyree Clark. Next slide, please. I'm going to briefly discuss the next steps APAC has in mind for the upcoming school year. Next slide, please. The next step for APAC are to continue hosting student and staff forums to provide outlets for important dialogue and begin necessary action planning as a district. Also to implement student and family workshops to assist our community in the transition back to the new school environment and to increase APAC parent participation with representatives from every school site. Next slide, please. APAC would like to thank the board for this opportunity to present tonight and for your continued support in the fight for equity. Any interested stakeholders can connect with APAC by visiting our website at bit.ly forward slash APAC underscore Colton CJUSD. You also can follow us on Twitter at APAC underscore CJUSD. And if you need to contact us directly, you can reach us at our email address, APAC at ColtonJoint.net. Thank you once again for this time. We definitely appreciate it. Thank you so much for the presentation. Um, comments and questions for, from board members, please. This is board member Fuentes, uh, yes. uh, if I may, thank you. Please. Uh, Dr. Uh, Curry and Ms. Durham, uh, Durham, thank you very much for such a great presentation. I, a lot of these events, I was there for these events. They were awesome, especially the talent one. That was something I'll never forget. Uh, we had some singers there, some poetry. It was an awesome, awesome event. And I can't wait to be able to see this in person uh, this coming. We can do it in person. And uh, a lot of these activities. and. Uh, just want to thank you for all the hard work that you've done uh, getting all this information to us. I want to thank the parents from the APAC uh, also for their participation in this. If it wasn't for our parents, we, you know, a lot of times that's what, who we need to come out there, our students and them voicing their, their concerns and their opinions. I'm all for that. And I will continue to be a big supporter of APAC. So thank you very much for such a great presentation. Thank you, board member Fuentes. Other uh, other comments, uh, questions from board members? Well, like Mr. Fuentes, this is Mrs. Arreguin. Like Mr. Fuentes, I attended a lot of these events. I would like to thank our staff for your dedication and commitment to our African-American students. Um, and um, I look forward to future activities next year. And, you know, this is a very, very important committee. And I also have seen you know, firsthand the, the work that and the dedication for, you know, like uh, Mr. Williford and Tiffany Hampton and Dolores, and uh, I could name a lot of uh, dedicated people. So keep up the good work. And this is a very, very important cause. Thank you so much. Thank you, Board Member Adegin. Other comments or questions from board members? I'll, um, I want to thank uh, Dr. Curry, uh, Dr. Curry and uh, Ms. Durham for the presentation, really all of the staff that are involved in leading this effort. This is still a relatively new effort here in our district. Uh, and as has been shared, it is incredibly important, um, not just for our students, but I think for our staff and everybody that's a part of this district. Um, I know that we have had um, at times folks who have been somewhat critical 
and have questioned uh, this effort and some of the conversations that have taken place. But uh, I think what you have heard today and will continue to hear from this board, the Board of Education that represents this community, elected by the community, is that we are behind you 100% in this effort. And the conversations that are taking place are important conversations that need to take place. That if we're truly going to help our students grow, not just academically and intellectually, but really to become good citizens, if you will, of, of this country, responsible citizens, responsible voters, leaders, and engaged citizens, we have to invoke conversations that challenge sometimes um, uh, the, the conventional thought and the conventional way of doing things. And I, I have participated in, in the past and, and, um, and I just am so grateful that we are creating a space where our students, our parents and our staff can have these conversations in a safe place, in a productive way um, that ultimately seeks, seeks a positive outcome, right? We're about building bridges and opportunities for positive change. So I, I'm incredibly grateful for APAC and the work that you continue to do within our district. And I've said it before and I'll say it again, uh, we are a, a minority majority district in the sense that we are somewhere in the neighborhood of 85% of our students identify as Hispanic. And I think that's wonderful and we embrace that and there is a beautiful cultural element to that. But we have an obligation to make sure that all cultures, all ethnicities, all stories uh, are told in our district and that everybody has a voice. And um, we simply can't say, well, we're, we're quote unquote diverse because look at, the, look at that number. Diversity actually means diversity, right? That all folks are represented. And equity means equity, that all folks are represented, all voices are heard. So um, I wanna thank, thank you for the presentation and know that the board is very supportive of this effort as we move forward. So thank you, we appreciate it. Wonderful. Thank you for that, Dr. Miranda uh, and Dr. Peterson, of course, for your efforts and, and your team for helping provide an opportunity for our staff to continue to work together on something as important as, as what it, the work that APAC is doing. That concludes our special presentations for today, and we will move on to item uh, 4.1, which is a public hearing we have scheduled for this evening. Uh, 4.1 is a public hearing for the naming of Grand Terrace High School's Wellness Center. And so at this time, I will officially open the public hearing, for item 4.1, and I'll ask Ms. Medina if there are any public comments for um, item 4.1. There are no public comments for item 4.1. All right. And if there are no public comments for item 4.1, we'll go ahead and close the public hearing and we'll bring it back to the board uh, and proceed with our next item on the agenda. And that is public comment. So at this time, I will turn it over to Ms. Medina to read public comment for tonight's meeting. Thank you, Board President Flores. Public comment number one, former Bloomington High School student. To whom it may concern. Hello, I graduated from BHS in the class of 2020. In my senior year there, I decided to take ERWC as my English course. This class was by, was by far the mo most stressful and arduous class I've ever attended, even now that I am in Cal Poly Pomona. There I met a classmate who was in the English Learners program by the name of Angel Alvarez. He would sit at the back of the classroom and usually would mention how difficult the class was for him. In one case, he asked if the teacher would take time in the morning to help him. She promised to be there and did not show up. She then actually screamed and embarrassed Angel in front of the class, saying he was the one that didn't show up, although he had taken pictures that proved he was there on time and she wasn't. He stood up to the challenge of taking the hardest English class as an English learner. As his class was tough for any person, it was worse for him. His troubles in speaking English were not only judged by the teacher, but also put him behind in the class. Even with his best efforts, he would get zeros on his assignments. When asked about it, the teacher would give bad excuses to justify the zero. He shouldn't have gotten zeros while actually putting in the work. Towards the end of the semester, he would say he couldn't take the class anymore and would like to drop it. He was not comfortable in that environment and was falling behind. He explained to me how he looked for help since the beginning to get out of the class, but no one would help him, and those who tried wouldn't be able to do much, until he talked to Dr. Strickorda. Dr. Strickorda helped my classmate and other English learners in many ways. She helped him get out of ERWC and kept him motivated to pursue his career in college. 
In a way, Dr. Strickwarda helped many kids in high school feel validated, equal, and important. She strives to help those in need and always push them to succeed in school and beyond. Thank you for your time. Public comment number two, Lisa Villa, parent. Good evening, everyone. So many issues and situations I would like to address, but with the Colton graduation coming up in just one short week, I will have to address those issues at a later time because graduation for our graduates is a priority at this time. The board chose to remain in distance learning for the remainder of the 2021 school year, regardless of what the parents and community wanted, knowing our children were failing miserably in distance learning, even when the CDC allowed the Colton School District to come back to in-person learning. They still prematurely chose to remain in distance learning and the reason seemed to be because it was inconvenience to come back for that short time and the fact that the schools were not prepared for the students to come back to campus. What was being done for the whole year in preparation to come back? In my opinion, absolutely nothing. While our kids continue to fail and some are even mentally affected by this whole pandemic crisis, it was never about safety because if that was the case, then we would surely see those that were thankful to remain in distance learning safe at home. But instead, the students and parents saw them out and about and not safe at home. And if people are now going to say it's because they are vaccinated now, then it was just that easy to get vaccinated and come back to school. Even if it was just for a short six weeks, it would not have been an inconvenience. It would have been an opportunity for our children to reconnect with each other, especially our seniors. I don't see our children as an inconvenience. Our daughter, granddaughter, family and friends who are also seniors have lost their whole senior year due to unpreparedness by the Colton District. There have been countless district decisions throughout the years made on behalf of our children that have let us parents know that the success of our children is not important, but the pandemic situation and how the district handled it was the topping on the cake for us parents, completely mishandled. Our schools will not be up and running in time for our kids to attend summer school. It's a shame. It's all about politics. With that being said, our Colton graduation is supposed to be a happy occasion. The only people in attendance should be there are the people that truly care about our Colton High graduates. So in order to maximize the number of space for the graduates and the families of the graduates, I ask that the board members and administration not to attend our Colton High graduation and remain safe at home. I suggest we have the graduates vote for one favorite Colton teacher to hand them their diplomas, someone they see that truly cares for their future. The students and parents do not want to hear speeches made by adults telling all of us how much they love and care about our children and how they wish our graduates the best in their future endeavors when in fact that's the furthest from the truth. Let's make Colton High graduation about the students and families. It's best if you step aside and let our graduates shine. They deserve it. Respectfully, Lisa Villa, parent and grandparent of two Colton High seniors. And that concludes public comment. All right, thank you for that, Ms. Medina. That takes us then to item, our action items for tonight's meeting, item 6.1 through item 6.59. Uh, we do have a few items that we'll, we will need to pull. Uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and ask that we pull item 6.4 for separate consideration. Uh, items 6.5 through item 6.10. So that's 6.5, 6.6, 6.7, 6.8, 6.9, and 6.10 for separate consideration. And uh, let's see, Ms. Medina, do you have the item for the separate consideration? And I'm also going to request that we pull item 6.58 uh, for separate consideration. And that, that's all I have on my list, but I want to ask other board members, any other items uh, to pull for separate consideration? Oh, hearing none, okay. All right, so what we'll do is I'll ask for a motion to approve our action item calendar with the exception of items 6.4, 6.5, 6.6, 6.7, 6.8, 6.9, 6.10, Six point ten and six point five eight. So, is there a motion to approve the balance of the agenda items with those items? So moved, Pat Harrell. Great. Motion second by board is Harrell. Fuentes. And a second by board member Fuentes. Thank you for that, uh, Miss Medina. Roll call vote, please. Miss Adigay. Yes. 
Yes. Mr. Fuentes? Yes. Thank yes. Ms. Sandoval? Yes. Ms. Dori Nojeda? Yes. Mr. Ibarra? Yes. Ms. Haro? Yes. Mr. Flores? Yes. Thank you. Great. Thank you for that. Those items are approved. So it takes us to the items that were pulled for separate consideration. Uh, first item is item 6.4. Uh, since I pulled it, I'll go ahead and I'm happy to make the motion uh, to approve that item. Is I'd that like to right? second it. Frank you, Ibarra. Yes, please, Board Member Ibarra. Thank you for that. Um, this is the official item uh, to take action to name the Wellness Center at Grand Terrace High School after Coach Harold Strauss. Um, Coach Strauss is one of those gentlemen that you don't really need to introduce to too many folks in the district because he's been around not only uh, in our uh, in our program, but really around the region. And it, it's hard to sum up everything that Coach Strauss has meant to our district, to our schools, and to even before he came to Colton Unified at Bloomington Christian. Coach Strauss is a man that needs little introduction. As we know, we lost Coach Strauss here recently, and I can think of no better way to honor his memory and his legacy than naming the Wellness Center at Grand Terrace High School after him. There's nobody better suited or more deserving of that. Coach Strauss won a lot of games, um, but more so than that, he touched a lot of lives. And he wasn't just a coach, he was a mentor. He was a, he was a man that helped shape other young men uh, and other students. Um, he is somebody that will, that we miss, um, but he will forever have a, a, a legacy here in the Colton Unified School District. And so it, I, I want to thank staff for the recommendation to name the Wellness Center uh, in honor of Coach Strauss. Um, I am grateful that we reached out to the family as well. And we have a legacy, if you will, in the sense that uh, he has family that continues to work here in the district and continue that tradition of service to the students. So certainly a privilege to be able to take action on this tonight as a Board of Education. Um, and uh, I imagine we have other board members that want to share some comments, so I definitely want to open the floor. I'll go ahead and make a comment, uh, Dan, if I may. Thank you. As you mentioned, uh, Coach Strauss, Harold was a friend to everyone. He was someone that gave his... Uh, career to to the service of others and uh he meant a lot to everyone that he came in con uh, in contact with uh, start off with the numerous uh football players that can go way back which also includes my son played for him and uh how he as an individual uh was also uh married a lot of those individual football players, because I've went to several uh, weddings of football players that he uh, actually presided over the wedding. And uh, he was always uh, a friendly person, greeting person, and uh, someone that I know as a district, as, as a community, and as an individual myself, you know, truly miss, uh, and uh, he meant so much. So uh, just like uh, uh, Dan mentioned, uh, you know, he's uh, we've been we were fortunate to have him, and and uh, for all the years that we did, and he, uh, like I said, he meant so much to so many. So I just want to say as well, uh, thank you for those who recommended him for. Uh, this honor and uh you know and you know and i think that in a, in a small way we will always remember harold strauss thank you dan absolutely thank you mr bar any other um, comments uh from board members i'd like to make a comment board member flores please. yes please coach all of us knew coach strauss coach strauss was such a wonderful, wonderful man. Um, as you said, he he was at Bloomington Christian, then he was at Bloomington High School, then he was at Colton High School and ended his career 
in Grand Terrace High School. He was loved by so many people. Um, as <clears throat> my colleague said, he, he touched so many lives, so many students' lives, so many teachers' lives, so many parents' lives. Um, not only was he a teacher and a let you know uh, an AD, um, he was also a minister. He um, had a very strong faith, as does his family. And in fact, um, my husband and I are going to renew our vows, and he had agreed to renew our vows. Um, he was a truly unique individual. Um, you know, a lot of times people um, are loved by some and hated by others or not liked by others. And there's always, but never, you, you've never heard a bad word said about Harold Strauss. He was just that kind of person. And um, I think this is a perfect way to honor his memory and to honor his family. So thank you. Absolutely, thank you, board member Haro. Are there other comments from board members? Just want to, and again, I, I thank you board member Haro and, and board member Ibarra for, for, for sharing the, the fact that, that Coach Strauss was a man of faith. And I think as much as he loved his students and he loved his players, um, there's no question his family and his faith were right up there. And it's it's wonderful to see that legacy continued in um, in his daughter who continues to work with our district and with our students. Uh, in fact, I had a chance to see her uh, recently and, and share some words with her that we were honored to be able to do this in memory of her father. And uh, again, it's to honor that legacy um, here in, in Colton Unified. So uh, with that being said, we do have a motion and a second on the table. And I will ask uh, Ms. Medina for a roll call vote. Ms. Ariki? Ms. Ariki? Yes. Mr. Puentes? A definite yes. Ms. Sandoval? Yes. Ms. Doreen Ojeda? Yes. Mr. Ibarra? Yes. Mrs. Haro? Yes. Mr. Flores? Yes. Thank you. Thank you for that. All right, we have a few items that we'll need to work through with respect to readouts, and um, these are the items that were pulled 6.5 through 6.10. So what we'll do is we'll take those in order, and I will begin with item 6.5. Which is approval of a second amendment to the employment contract between the superintendent and the Colton Unified School District. This is for Dr. Miranda, our superintendent. And I will need to read the terms of the contract uh, for each of these items. So please bear with me. This particular item for uh, the superintendent is a term of January 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2023. Uh, annual salary of 240465 Annual work years 223 days. Uh, district provided vehicle and health insurance, the same medical and dental insurance benefits offered to other certificate management employees, 14 days per fiscal year sick leave and retiree health benefits. Uh, due to the length of the superintendent service with the district, superintendent is vested in the district's retiree health benefit program. Uh, at this time, I'll ask if there is a motion to approve the amendment to the superintendent's agreement as presented by staff. So moved Israel Fuentes. Second, Pat Haro. We have a motion from Board Member Fuentes, a second by Board Member Haro. Board Member, uh, excuse me, uh, Ms. Medina, roll call vote, please. Mr. Ibarra? Yes. Ms. Haro? Yes. Ms. Doreen Ojeda? Yes. Ms. Sandoval? Yes. Mr. Fuentes? Yes. Ms. Ariki? Yes. Mr. Flores? Yes. Thank you. Thank you for that. Well, the next item 6.6 .6, is approval of second amendment to the employment agreement between 
the Assistant Superintendent of Business Services in the Colton Unified School District. Um, this uh, agreement is with respect to Mr. Jensen, our Assistant Superintendent of Business Services. And the term of this agreement is uh, commences April 13th of 2020 through June 30th of 2023. Uh, annual salary is 179,584. Annual work year is 223 days. District provided vehicle. Health insurance is the same medical and dental insurance benefits offered to other certificated management employees and sick leave uh, 14 days per fiscal year. This time I'll ask if there's a motion to approve the amendment to Mr. Jensen's uh, contract as presented by staff. So move, Pat Harlow. Yeah. Second, Israel Fuentes. Motion by Board Member Harlow, second by Board Member Fuentes. Ms. Medina, roll call vote, please. Mr. Ibarra? Yes. Ms. Haro? Yes. Ms. Dorian Ojeda? Yes. Ms. Sandoval? Yes. Mr. Fuentes? Yes. Ms. Adegui? Yes. Mr. Flores? Yes. Thank you. Thank you for that. Item 6.7, approval of the First Amendment to the Employment Agreement between the Assistant Superintendent of Educational Services and the Colton Joint Unified School District. This contract pertains to Ms., uh, to Dr. Tina Peterson, our Assistant Superintendent of Ed, Ed Services. Uh, the term of this contract commences July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2024. Annual salary is 179584 Annual work year is 223 days. District provided vehicle. Health insurance is the same medical and dental insurance benefits offered to other certificated management employees. Sick leave is 14 days per fiscal year. And due to the length of assistant superintendents, the superintendent, assistant superintendent's dis, uh, service with the district, excuse me, uh, Dr. Peterson is vested in the district's retiree health benefit program. So at this time, I'll ask if there's a motion to approve the recommended amendment to the contract with the assistant superintendent of ed services. So moved. I'll make the motion. Second, Frank. Okay, well, we'll I believe that was board member Haro will say, uh, made the motion and board member Ibarra seconded it. Correct. Okay, Ms. Medina, roll call vote, please. It was Mrs. Haro and Mr. Ibarra, correct? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Ibarra? Yes. Mrs. Haro? Yes. Mr. Flores? Yes. Ms. Torino Hayda? Yes. Ms. Sandoval? Yes. Mr. Fuentes? Yes. Ms. Adegui? Yes. Thank you. Thank you for that. Item 6.8 is approval of the fourth amendment to the employment agreement between the Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources and the Colton Unified School District. This contract pertains to Ms. Ingrid Munsterman, our Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources. Term of the contract commences July 1st, 2018 through June 30th, 2021. Annual salary is 179,584. Annual work year is 223 days. District provided vehicle. Uh, the health, health insurance is the same medical and dental insurance benefits offered to other certificated management employees. Sick leave is 14 days per fiscal year. And due to the length of Ms. Munsterman's service with the district, uh, Ms. Munsterman is vested in the district retiree health benefit program. At this time, I'll ask if there's a motion to approve the- So moved, Mr. Haro. Thank you, Board Member Haro. Is there a second? Second, Thorne Ojeda. And a second by Board Member Thorne Ojeda. Uh, Ms. Medina, roll call vote, please. Ms. Arigui? Yes. Mr. Fuentes? Yes. Ms. Sandoval? Yes. Ms. Torino Hayda? Yes. yes. Mr. Ibarra? Yes. Ms. Haro? Yes. Mr. Flores? Yes. yes. Thank you. Thank you for that. Item 6.9. Uh, this is approval of the first amendment to employment agreement between the Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources and the Colton J Unified School District. This contract pertains to Mr. Derek Garcia, the soon to be Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources for the Colton School District. Uh, that term begins July 1st of 2021 through June 30th of 2024. Uh, annual salary is 179,584. Uh, work year is 223 days, district provided vehicle. Health insurance is the same medical and dental insurance benefits offered to other certificated management employees and sick leave is 14 days per year. This time I'll ask if there is a motion to approve the agreement as presented, uh, the amendment to the agreement as presented by staff. So 
So moved. Thank you. Board second. Board. second. Okay, uh, second by board member Sandoval. All right, Ms. Menina, roll call vote, please. Ms. Adigui? Yes. Mr. Fuentes? Yes. Ms. Sandoval? Yes. Ms. Doreen Ojeda? Yes. Mr. Ibarra? Yes. Mrs. Taro? Yes. Mr. Flores? Yes. Thank you. Thank you for that. And 6.10 is approval of the first amendment to the employment agreement between the assistant superintendent of student services and the Colton Unified School District. This contract pertains to Mr. Brandon Dade, our assistant superintendent of student services. The term commences January 19th, 2021 through June 30th of 2024. Annual salary is 179,584. Annual work year is 223 days. District provided vehicle. Health insurance is the same medical and dental insurance offered to other certificated management employees and sick leave is 14 days per fiscal year. I'll ask if there's a motion to approve the contract amendment as presented by staff. So, so moved. moved. Correct. Okay, we'll say board member uh, Ibarra with the motion and board member Fuentes with the second. And I yes. will ask for a roll call vote. Ms. Adeke? Yes. Mr. Fuentes? Yes. Ms. Sandoval? Yes. Ms. Torino Heda? Yes. Mr. Ibarra? Yes. Ms. Taro? Yes. Mr. Flores? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. That item is approved. That takes us to the last pulled item, which was uh, 6.58. Since I asked that it be deferred, I'll go ahead and make the motion to approve item 6.58. Second. So moved. Oh, I'll go ahead and if you don't mind, board member, I believe I'll, I'll, I made a motion. Would you mind seconding it then? Yes. Okay, great. Second by board member Haro. Um, just would like to ask very briefly, uh, Mr. Dade, if you could just uh, share a little bit, a very brief overview of this program. I'm not sure that everybody is aware of this particular program. This is our workability program. Uh, I've had the privilege of seeing this program in action, if you will. It is amazing. And I just wanted to take a few minutes to highlight it um, because I think it's really important that the folks understand what we're doing in partnership with local businesses in the community and our students through our special education program. So, Mr. Day. Absolutely. Thank you, President Flores and, and board members. Um, this program is a wonderful program that allows for our special ed students to receive job placement in our, in our community uh, with our local business owners. Um, if you ever, ever had a chance to go out and, and observe um, this brings life to all of our students um, in a way that we can never uh, really imagine. They're able to acquire the skills that they need to not only um, complete the job, but they also acquire new skills um, and new a new identity, if I, if I can, for a lack of a better way to explain it. Um, and so they're they're engaging with the community and with the local business owners really lifts their spirits um, as well as their parents. And um, and once again, it gives them an opportunity to um really acquire some skills that um that that other students do not get to acquire at times um but more importantly it just gives them you know once again equity and access to, to the things that our general ed students have so um our team um in pps and across the district who facilitate this process do a wonderful job of supporting the students while they're out in the community and working um often from our local um, business owners you'll hear from them that you know this these are our best employees they come with a smile they're always happy they greet everyone um, and they always ask what you know what more can they do and so um, it's been a, a wonderful um, experience for me to to watch and and um, and support this program for my time my minimum the very little time that I've been here um, but also a bit prior to coming to the district and, and being a part of the CJUSD family um, I have an older brother who is deaf and um, participated in this program and I, I really know tremendously how much of an impact it made in his life um, because he went from a, a high school student to the uh, athletic director for the School of the Deaf in Tucson, Arizona, just from acquiring these skills. And so um, it's such an important program and, and I wanna thank President Flores and the board and Dr. Miranda for, for supporting this program and, um, and hopefully we'll continue to, um, as we reopen, be able to place more and more students to acquire the skills they need to be successful later in life. Thank you for that, Mr. Dade. I appreciate it. And again, I've had the privilege of, of actually taking a tour with our staff and seeing our students at some of the some of the stores. 
where they're working. And you're right, they're so excited, the, the jobs that they have, and they're so passionate about it. They'll tell you what they're doing, they'll show you what they're doing. Um, I think it's fantastic. And I'd love maybe in the future to see perhaps a presentation, Dr. Miranda, about this program and really what we're doing with our special education students, particularly those in high school. And again, I'm not sure the community at large knows how much we provide internally as a school district um, to our students, uh, even those that fall under the mod severe category, we provide support, programming, education, and it, it's incredible. And it's, it's the most heartwarming thing to see, to know that these students are in our schools and in our program. We're not sending them outside or to other places. They can stay in their community, in their schools, and work with our, our teachers and our special education folks and, and do amazing things. So I just wanted to highlight that. It's something that's I know near and dear to a lot of our hearts. And we have a motion and a second on the floor to approve it. So I'll ask Ms. Medina for a roll call vote. Ms. Adegui? Yes. Mr. Fuentes? A definite yes. Ms. Sandoval? Yes. Ms. Doreen Ojeda? Yes. Mr. Ibarra? Yes. Mrs. Haro? Yes. Mr. Flores? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that concludes our action items for today and uh, takes us to our administrative reports. I wanted to ask if there are any questions that board members might have on our administrative reports, item 7.1 or 7.2. Hearing none, we'll go ahead and go to 7.3. I don't believe we have facilities update tonight, so uh, we'll turn it over to, let's see, I don't believe we have a business services update either. So. We'll jump right into our ACE update and uh, turn it over to our ACE president, Ms. Christina Paracci. Hello, esteemed board members, members, Superintendent Miranda, cabinet members, and members of the audience. My name is Christina Paracci. I have the privilege to serve as the president of the Association of Colton Educators. Woohoo! Nine more school days for our students and most of our certificated staff. It has been a year where we needed to make a lot of adjustments and now that is ending, we are looking back and are trying to find all the positive things. Collectively, we rose to the challenge of the century and we moved from teaching in person to teaching online in a matter of weeks. We learned how to present, how to collaborate, negotiate, develop lessons, use new technologies and platforms, be there for each other and care for our loved ones during, during a pandemic. We continue to stay online teaching since it was not safe to return to in-person instruction. Um, I just want to share some things that ACE has done for our members. The ACE membership committee really took care of our members. We had virtual yoga every Tuesday for a few months. We had paint nights, ceramic nights, escape room night, and a few bingo nights. It was a way to enjoy being together in a virtual world. We have 63 certificated members that are retiring this year. We are not saying goodbye, but keep in touch. We hope you all have a wonderful retirement. You will be missed, but never forgotten. You've done so much for all of us and our students. On May 18th, we had 32 first year teachers finish their induction program. And today we had 23 second year teachers graduating from their induction program with a clear credential. Congratulations, and we are happy to have you on our team. This could not have been accomplished without our own dedicated team of induction coaches. Thank you to all the coaches for all the support and dedication. We will have many teachers working during the summer to help our students succeed and prepare for the next school year. Thank you for your willingness to give up your summer for our students. We are heartbroken in light of the sad news of Patrick Master, Monsterman passing. As some of our members describe Pat, he was bigger than life, happy and cheerful, and ready to share a funny joke at all times. Enjoy your summer vacation for those of us that are now working and that will take a, a break to rejuvenate. Have a good summer. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pranchi. 
Um, I don't believe we have a CSA update this evening, nor a Mac update. So we'll go ahead and go to our ROP update. And I'll invite either Mr. Barr or Ms. Har to please share an update with us. I'll put it that way. Uh, we don't have uh, an update for today, though. So uh, we, we did not meet. Okay, no worries. Okay. Uh, we'll look forward to the next one then. Okay. That takes us to Superintendent's communique. So Dr. Miranda, please. Yes, thank you, Board President, uh, Board members and Executive Cabinet, uh, members of the audience. Uh, so uh, short communique tonight. I uh, do want to highlight, first of all, if we can move on to the next slide. Just uh, first, our ACES uh, Elementary Summer Virtual Program. Next slide, please. Maybe not. <laughs> I think one, if you can go back one. Okay. We'll get there. There we go. Okay. Appreciate that. Okay. So, so uh, first I wanted to highlight our ACES Elementary Summer uh, Virtual Program. So the district uh, will be offering a summer 2021 program via a distance learning platform from June 8th through the through July 1st. Uh, so the times will be uh, from 2 o'clock, 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. in the afternoon. Uh, and it's going to be hosted with our partners from Think Together. Uh, the program is going to be open to all uh, current kindred through uh, fifth grade students who attend uh, our elementary schools in the Colton Joy Unified School District in our district. And uh, enrollment is going to be first come, first serve. Uh, so spaces are limited. So again, it'd be first come, first serve. So now enrollment is actually now open. Uh, it can be completed via the link found on the district's website. So if you go there to www.cgst.net, you can see the enrollment uh, to be able to enroll for this program. And then all enrolled students are going to receive a, uh, first of all, uh, free materials, uh, a material, free materials kit, rather, that will allow them to participate in the programming. Um, so in addition, uh, if you're interested in attending uh, one of the ACES after school programs for the 21-22 school year, uh, then, uh, which is going to resume, resume in person uh, in the next school year coming up, uh, please uh, complete your intent to apply from the same link. So again, we're just excited again to uh, not only offer this in the summer, but also do the in-person when we come back full return in fall. All right, so we can move on to the next slide. So uh, I want to talk about the mobile vaccination sites. And uh, get, we are extremely excited to share that we've partnered with uh, the county, San Marino County Public Health, to offer more um, mobile COVID-19 vaccination site events, rather. So mobile uh, COVID-19 vaccination events will take place uh, for all individuals now 12 and up. So as you know, the vaccinations now, uh, students uh, that are 12 and up can, can be vaccinated. One cl clinic uh, was held uh, yesterday on May, May 19th at Bloomington High School and the next clinic will be on Tuesday, May 25th at Colton High School from 2 to 6 p.m. and no appointments uh, are needed. I also want to thank uh, Mr. Brandon Day, our Assistant Superintendent of Student Services, who has uh, led the, the district and the charge in working with the county and with his team, of course, because I know he will give credit to his team, but he has led and, and had these uh, working with the county to make sure that we have these mobile sites. So we really appreciate that. Next uh, slide, please. Uh, and I think all of you know that we're having some great senior award events throughout the district. It's great to, to see kids being recognized. Uh, so we've been fortunate to schedule the senior awards events at our high schools, at all our high schools. Uh, the award events uh, were a great way, again, to celebrate all the great accomplishments of our seniors as well as other students both. So not just seniors were uh, awarded, but uh, high schools also had uh, award ceremonies for uh, students 9th through 11th. But we know it's a special year for our seniors because 
they're they're graduating uh so we we definitely want to emphasize their accomplishments since they they will be leaving us pretty soon and having some great uh graduations here so i'll just tell you attending these events have been uh just a, just a joyous just to see uh the smiles and uh and i'll tell you our, our students uh are just have some great accomplishments uh i mean students are carrying medals awards certificates and they're going to great universities and colleges uh and so just really proud not only of them but also their families to see the families uh smile out there at these events and take pictures so thank you to the families for your support uh, and I also want to thank uh, high school principals and staff for putting these together. Uh, I was yesterday at the Grand Terrace High School uh, uh, award ceremony, and it was just a uh, just a great event, just a phenomenal event. So thank you to staff, thank you to the principals, and and again students and families for for that. And the last thing that I have tonight is, of course, I want to end with uh, CJSD cares. There we go. Great. So uh, we're, we're again uh, excited that this year we get to uh, see our graduates who are gonna graduate in, in person uh, this school year. So it's been a long time coming, but we are, we are very excited to see our students. So on behalf, of, uh, uh, on behalf of the Board of Education, congratulations to all our graduates, your resilience, your passion, your creativity to keep uh, moving forward, even in a time of obstacles, uh, that you've, sh you've faced this year, in the last several years actually, uh, has shown that you are true leaders uh, and that each of you will learn from this and take this with you wherever you go. I guarantee that you will make great things happen and represent our district. Uh, so your, your graduation will be the first of many proud uh, and successful moments in your life and, and you will go on to greater and bigger things. Uh, we just know it. We wish all the graduates again the be best wishes uh, for all of your tomorrows and and your well-deserved successes. Uh, so graduation dates, just to kind of give you an idea: Thursday, May 27, Colton High School at 6:30 at Colton High School Stadium. On Tuesday, June 1st, is going to be our Bloomington High School graduation at 6:30, 66er Stadium. Wednesday, June 2nd, Grand Terrace High School at seven o'clock and that's at 66 er stadium thursday june 3rd is our slover uh graduation and that's at five o'clock and we'll be having that at colton high school stadium thursday june 3rd is our washington high school graduation and that's at 6 30 and that will be held at at colton high school stadium so we look forward to seeing uh all the graduates uh in just a very moment monument monumental day uh, and so thank you uh, for that. And uh, that's it. That's all I have tonight, Board President. I'll turn it back over to you. Great. Thank you for that, Dr. Miranda. Uh, next time on the agenda is our board member comments. And we'll begin tonight with board member Ibarra. Okay. Thank you, Dan. Uh, first of all, I'd like to just start off by uh, congratulating our adult school for receiving the Adult Education and Family Literacy Act that we uh, voted on just a, a few minutes ago. It, a, a grant that award them uh, an opportunity to get additional funding so that we could enhance and add to uh, our, uh, our program there with the adult students that, that participate. I had to mention it because of my uh, lengthy background with adult education. So, I think it's wonderful when uh, we get awarded any type of grants and funding that will help support uh, our ability to educate our community and the people who attend. Um, also, I just want to uh, ask a question. Uh, first of all, uh, once again, I'd like to just uh, say that it was wonderful that we were able to uh, to uh, talk and mention uh, some wonderful things about uh, Coach Strauss. And as we start to prepare to uh, name the, the Wellness Center after him, will we have a ceremony? Will we have some type of dedication to that building? Uh, are, are we gonna 
I'll work on doing something like that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Right. We certainly will uh, definitely look into that and get back to the board because uh, I think that would be appropriate if that's the yes. board wishes. I think so too. I think that would be really nice. So, okay, thank you for that. Uh, as uh, we all are, we're looking forward to graduations coming down the road. Um, I think that most of us, uh, I know I can speak for myself, we're, I'm excited about being able to do it in person and be able to uh, celebrate with not only our graduates, but also their families and friends that will be attending. Um, I know that each one of our principals at each one of the sites will do a wonderful job. They always do. And uh, I just look forward to a, a several exciting nights as we begin with Cone High School on the 27th. And uh, just, uh, just one last thing. I just want to, uh, since we're ending our school year, I just want to take this opportunity for everyone that is getting ready to take some time off to wish them a wonderful summer, a vacation, and uh, hopefully you're able to accomplish some of the things you would like to, and in turn also have some fun doing it. So with that, I just want to just wish everyone a wonderful uh, summer uh, vacation, and we look forward to starting back in August and uh if everything goes well you know everything will will be in person so that's going to also be a beginning of some exciting times for cohen joint unified school district so with that uh just want to say thank you again to everyone and back to you dan great thank you board member Ibarra. uh board member thorin ojeda <clears throat> thank you I'll begin by saying a big thank you to every single member of our school district. Uh, we have had a difficult year and we've done a very good job of meeting, uh, doing the best that we can under the circumstances we've had. And I thank everyone for making that happen. With the close of the school year coming, I do, I also wish everyone a very good summer, uh, some time for R&R. &R. And for our graduates, I wish you the very best as you move on to the next chapter of your life, uh, be it college or school or job or whatever it may be. Know that we are proud of you for making it to graduation and we have very good wishes for you in your future. Um, that's all I have, thank you. Thank you for that, Board Member Thurnohita. Uh, Board Member Adegin. Yes, thank you. This is Classified Appreciation Week. I would like to just say thank you to all of our employees and just to let you know how much we appreciate you and how important you are to our district. Yesterday, um, what was it Wednesday, um, uh, Dr. Miranda and I visited some schools and I was very, very happy to see um, many, many classified workers um, throughout the, the district. Uh, we saw maintenance department working on the buildings and the fields. We saw office staff greeting parents as they were returning books. We saw instructional assistants working with students and the nutrition service workers handing out lunches. What you do is so important you are the backbone of our district and we could not function without you. You have been in the forefront of this pandemic all year and for that we are very, very grateful. Happy Classified Appreciation Week to all of you. I would also like to congratulate the retirees um, and wish you the best. And uh, for the graduates, congratulations and I am looking forward to your graduations. Thank you. Thank you, Board Member Adegin. Uh, Board Member Hara. Um, I just want to um, bring up uh, one item that I, uh, what the students brought up earlier today 
in regards to the 10 ways to survive life in a quarantine. And this was uh, put on by the Bloomington High School Drama Department and the Grand Terrace. It was done together. Uh, Kim Guadagnoli is the drama teacher at Grand Terrace High School. Taylor Richardson is at Bloomington High School. And, you know, all our teachers struggled teaching this year, but our arts teachers, um, because they're, they don't, some of them don't teach necessarily out of a book. It's a, a whole different situation. And this performance by these kids was great. Um, I watched it on my iPad and laughed and laughed and laughed. These kids did a phenomenal job. So I just want to congratulate them on finding a way to continue uh, the arts and to continue to share it with finding a way to share it with others. So uh, what a, it was just a great program. Um, like board member Adeguin, it is classified employees week. And I want to thank all of our uh, classified employees for all you do. Um, you know, as they say, it takes a village to raise a child. Well, it takes all of us. Our, we are the village. And, um, and I want to thank you all for working together to do everything you can for our school sites and just for everything you do that you are appreciated. Um, to our graduates, I look forward to seeing you at graduation. Um, it just makes my heart happy that um, this uh, pandemic, uh, the situation we find our we found ourselves in, it has gotten better, and that we are able to do in person graduations. It is the least that we can do for our students. Um, I'm so proud of all of our graduates. They've been through some a lot a rough couple of uh, last couple of years, but we are so proud of them, and I look forward to. Um, you know, although it may be a little different than it has in the past, it is in person and we are going to honor you for all of your accomplishments. And I want to say um, thank you to all our retirees. All, uh, again, the, all the work that you've done for the Colton Joint Unified School District is truly, truly appreciated. As I said earlier, we are a family and and uh, we consider you part of that family always. Both when you were here and when you retire, you are a family. Um, my, uh, my heart goes out uh, to our assistant superintendent <clears throat> of human resources. Patrick was a member of this family and, and Ingrid is a member of our family. And it's a tough, it's um, a loss is always hard, but it is especially hard when it's a family member. And we are the Colton Joint Unified School District family. I want to thank all of our staff and our teachers for everything that they've done in this school year. This school year, as we know, was like no other. And I pray that we never see this, anything like this again. But our teachers are amazing. They did their job and then some. And so what I want to read tonight is a quote. In the best, in the best schools, everyone in every position is a teacher. There are dozens of job titles, but they all share the same role to change a kid's life. Thank you to all our classified staff and to all our teachers and all our administrators for changing a kid's life this year for the better. God bless you all. Thank you, Board Member Haro. Uh, Board Member Fuentes. Thank you, Board President. Well, what a year, a year of a pandemic. And you know something, we did have some challenges. We did go through a lot of, uh, a lot of different uh, things that we had to learn. We, we, we learned, we had a lot of victories. We had a lot of accomplishments. 
as I uh, participated in the senior uh, uh, drive throughs and the senior awards over at, uh, I was at Colton uh, High School this past Saturday for the 9th through 11th drive through. And then I was there for the senior uh, senior event in the evening alongside uh, Brandon Dade and Jacqueline, Jacqueline Paul was there also. And to see these students as they were coming up and I was fist bumping them and congratulating them, I could see the smile, I could see that their accomplishment, you know, I, I, I would ask most of the students what, what college they were going to. And to, uh, to my surprise, almost 95% of the students were going to do something, some type of technical school, either a university, a college, or that we're going to go somewhere to learn something. Infantry, ironworks, something was happening. Even though we had a pandemic, we have a, a whole class of students who have accomplished a year of challenges and are moving on to their next chapter in life. And I am so very, very proud of these students. I was at the uh, Bloomington High School drive through also. I was at the Grand Terrace drive through also. And I, I could hear uh, Principal Dare, Dr. Dare, asking the students, what, what school are you going to? And we would hear NYU, UC, USC, UCLA, uh, uh, Irvine, uh, you know, Riverside, uh, Cal State San Bernardino. So it was, it was awesome, awesome to hear uh, our students moving on to that next chapter in life. And I am so very proud of the class of 2021. Congratulations for your accomplishments and your next chapter of life and your next chapter in your careers are coming soon. Uh, enjoy them. Keep challenging yourselves. Keep working hard as you've done, as you did this year during this pandemic. I know it was not easy doing it distant learning. And to all of our students and to all of our parents, thank you for those students that were on distant learning for the rest, of the, for the for the remainder of the year. You did it. You're here. You can, and it it's done. So congratulations once again. Wanted to also highlight uh, some school visits that I did also with uh, Dr. Miranda. It was exciting to see these young young uh, students sitting at a desk uh, with their Chromebooks open and working on their assignments. So that was awesome to see the organizational uh, of getting them into the schools, taking their temperatures. All of that was very, very, very well done at these schools that we visited. I am proud to say we're ready to go when we open up in August. We're good to go. I'm excited. Uh, also wanted to give uh, also to all of our teachers, our employees are classified. Thank you very, very much for all you do. If like, like I think Ms. Harrell said, if it wasn't for you, you know, it's, it takes a village to raise a, a student. So we are the village, we are the family. And uh, to our security officers, you guys, our eyes and ears when our students are in the class, our eyes and ears when our campuses are closed, our eyes and ears at, during those graveyard shifts. Thank you, guys. Thank you, ladies, for all your service from the beginning of this pandemic. I know you guys have been out there. You know, you've been out there working, keeping an eye on our on our campuses, keeping an eye on on our uh, administration that that's there, our nutrition services when they were giving out. Uh, when they were giving out the lunches and the breakfasts. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And and I just want to kind of throw this out there. I'd like to see a little more support for our security uh, team, a little more, uh, I don't know if there, if there's a way to find a little more money for them. I like to see them get trained. I like to see their training. I like to see uh, them have a little more equipment because during when our students are sitting in class and our administrations are they're the ones out there in the front you know and i want to make sure that they have the training that they're prepared they're good to go you know as a former law enforcement officer i've always loved to have the training i always love to have the equipment i needed so i like to see if there's any way we can get more support for our security give them more because they are the ones who watch us while we're in the classroom while we're in our offices and even when our campuses are closed, they're out there and they're keeping an eye on things. Thank you to our security team. Shout out to you guys. And to our retirees, congratulations. It's that margarita time. Take the time to have that margarita. Enjoy it. Enjoy your time. Play. You know, 
you've been with us, your family, you will always be family here at Colton Joint Unified. And I'm gonna close with this to Ms. Munsterman. Our thoughts and prayers are with you. I will surely miss Mr. Munsterman. He was at Grimes Elementary when my girls were there. And I remember always saying hi to him, talking to him. He'd always give me advice. And I will surely miss Mr. Munsterman. And our thoughts and prayers are with you, Ms. Munsterman. Have a great night. Thank you, Board Member Fuentes. Uh, Board Member Sandoval. Hi, thank you. No, no comments for today. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Um, Sandoval. Uh, and I, I just want to thank everyone um, for tonight's meeting. Uh, it got to celebrate some wonderful milestones for those who are receiving their longevity and those who are retiring. But to be honest, it's also been a bit of a challenging meeting. And that's okay. It's time. Uh, I want to thank uh, I want to thank our staff to put together this beautiful book um, and honoring those in our district who we lost this past year. Uh, and just remind everybody that, you know, in life, we have two options. We can choose to build people up or we can choose to cut people down. And I know that sometimes it's uh, easier perhaps, or it feels like for us more satisfying to point out the negativity that we see in this world. But when it's said and done, what we're often remembered for are the good works, the kind deeds, kind words, and what God calls us to do is to lift each other up. And so I want to thank everybody for what you've done for us during this very difficult school year. From our teachers, to our staff, to the volunteers, to the parents. And not everybody, not everybody reaches out. We have a lot of students in our district, more than 22,000. Not every parent reaches out via email or by phone or by text. Um, many of them are just doing what they can each day to take care of their children and their families. But uh, I appreciate all the work that's been done to try and make this uh, the best that it can be in a very difficult situation. So thank you everyone for what you've done for us and our students. I appreciate that. Uh, that concludes our board member comments for, uh, for tonight. We will be adjourning into closed session. But prior to doing that, I will simply ask We'll be joining tonight's meeting uh, in memory and in honor of Mr. Patrick Munsterman. And this has been shared, a longtime employee, teacher here in the Colton School District, and of course, the husband of Ingrid Munsterman, another longtime servant, if you will, of this school district. We'll be adjourning the meeting in memory of Patrick tonight, but I would also ask that we just take a few seconds, a moment of silence in his memory. Thank you for that. Um, with that, we'll adjourn into closed session. Thank you, board members. We'll see you in closed session, and we'll just take we'll just take a quick five minute break before we uh, get going in closed, board members. So we'll see you in five. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah and Hillary. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you.
We're coming back. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> I see Miss Sandoval's on. I see Miss Adigi. I see Mr. Flores. I see Mr. Ibarra. I see Mr. Fuentes. I see Miss Hollow. And I see Ms. Joanne Thorne Ojeda. I think we're good. Do we have everybody on? We do. All right. Well, that was quick, record time. All right. That being <laughs> the case, we'll re, um, we will reconvene our open session meeting of the Board of Education for today on May 20th. We have a number of reportable action items from closed session. So, Ms. Medina, I'll go ahead and read those out and ensure that we record those properly. We'll begin with item 11.1. This is our personal public employee uh, appointment discipline dismissal on a motion by board member Fuentes and seconded by board member Pat Haro. The board approved the uh, appointments uh, of the classified management position, one executive assistant and two volunteer coaches, basketball boys and track co-ed. That was a 7-0 unanimous vote. Thank you. 11.2. Uh, again, personal public employee, women discipline, dismissal on board on a motion by board member Fuentes and seconded by board member Ibarra and carried on a 7-0 vote. Uh, the board approved the notice of recommendation of disciplinary action of suspension without pay for employee ID number 5448. And that was approved again, 7-0. Thank you. Item 11.3. Uh, public personal appointment on a motion by board member Fuentes and seconded by board member Thorian Ojeda. The board appointed Tiffany Davis, assistant principal, elementary site to be determined, and that was approved on a 7 0 vote. Thank you. Item 11.4 personal public appointment on a motion by board member Thorian Ojeda, seconded by board member Haro. The board appointed Daniel Morgan. Assistant Principal Elementary site to be determined, and that was a 4 0 vote. Uh, you said a, a 4 0? I'm sorry, 7 0 vote. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, it's getting late. <laughs> 7 0. No problem, thank you. 11.5 <clears throat> Personal Public Employee Appointment on a motion by Board Member Ibarra and seconded by Board Member Fuentes. The Board appointed Rochelle Robinson. Assistant Principal, Elementary, site to be determined, and that was on a 7-0 unanimous vote. Thank you. And then 11-6, also a public, appoint, public employee appointment on a motion by Board Member Fuentes, seconded by Board Member Araguin. The Board appointed Erica McDonald, Principal, Middle School, site to be determined, and that was on a 7-0 vote. Thank you. And that is all that we have as far as readouts for closed session. So I want to thank everybody for tonight's meeting. We covered a lot of ground and did a lot of good work. We uh, just a reminder: we are adjourning tonight's meeting in memory of Patrick Munsterman. And so our thoughts and prayers are obviously with Ingrid and the Munsterman family, uh, grandchildren, family, extended family of the Colton Joint Unified School District, of course. So tonight we'll be adjourning in his memory. Thank you much, so much, everybody. Please enjoy the rest of your evening and be safe. We'll see you next time. We are adjourned. Good night. Good night. Good night. Take care, everybody. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night.